Welcome. Before we get into the multi-object conjugate priors and the tracking algorithms based on them, we need to talk about so-called object birth and object death. And that is what we will do in this video. Before we start talking about object birth and death, let's start with an example. So here we have an autonomous vehicle that has several sensors. We have five radars, one long range pointing forwards, and then we have four short range radars mounted on each corner of the vehicles. We also have a front facing stereo camera. And lastly, we have a laser scanner that's mounted on the roof. And this is a fairly typical set of sensors for an autonomous vehicle. So when we use these sensors to track objects around the vehicle, we limit ourselves typically to tracking the objects that are inside the field of view of at least one of the sensors. And the reason is that if an object is not in the field of view of any of the sensors, it cannot be detected. And then it cannot be tracked when we are doing tracking by detection. So we have a limited area that we are interested in when we do the tracking. Now, of course, this area moves as the vehicle moves. It is fixed to the vehicle. But at any given time, it is a limited area in which we do tracking. And actually, this holds generally in most MOT. We are interested in tracking objects in some limited area that is of interest to us. In the example we had earlier with an autonomous car, we said that the surveillance area can be the union of the sensor's field of view. But we have to note here that this is not always the case. The surveillance area is not limited to being the field of view of the sensor that we're using. So for example, let's say that we want to do airborne tracking in a city using an unmanned aerial vehicle or UAV, and it has a gimbal mounted camera. In this case, the camera might be directed to a certain area or it might zoom in closer such that the entire city is not in its field of view. But nonetheless, we still want to do tracking in the whole city. And if the UAV moves around and the camera sweeps over the city, this is still possible. So how is this related then to object birth and object death? Well, we want to track objects in the surveillance area. And then a so-called true object is one that is in the surveillance area for some time, at the very least one single time step. Often this is simplified a bit to say that a true object, it has to be in the surveillance area for a couple of scans or time steps. However, in the very most general case, a single time step is enough. Object birth is then defined as when the object first enters the surveillance area, or in other words, when it first appears. And similarly, object death is defined as when the object leaves the surveillance area, or in other words, when the object disappears. If we look at the set of objects, the birth and death is related to the time evolution of the set of objects. So how the set of objects changes from some set at time k to some set at time k plus 1. The set of objects at time k plus 1 can be said to be the union of so-called surviving objects and newborn objects, denoted xs and xb. So object birth, that's the set of newborn objects xb. And object death is the objects at time k that do not survive to time k plus 1 and are therefore not in the set xs. So we can have a look at what the object birth and death are for a simple example. So on the right here, we have illustrated 400 time steps of LiDAR data. The black semicircle, it illustrates the sensor's field of view, and the different colored points illustrate the time, starting from blue and then ranging to red, which is the final time steps. So in total, during these 400 time steps, there are four objects, pedestrians specifically we have here, that are inside the field of view of the sensor, at least at some point. So first, one object enters close to the origin, and the origin is where the sensor is located, and this person then proceeds to stand still in front of the sensor. Another one enters to the left of the first one, and then it walks around inside the field of view. A third enters here on the right and exits shortly thereafter. And similarly, a fourth one enters over here and then exits shortly thereafter. This is a fairly small and simple scenario. 
And this 2D LiDAR does not give as detailed information about the surroundings as a modern 3D LiDAR does. However, this is still quite useful for illustrative purposes. So here, object birth happens at times 22, 38, 283, and 345. And each time a single pedestrian enters the field of view. And object death happens twice, at times 310 and 362, one of the pedestrians leaves the field of view. To model the birth for this scenario, we can use some information and intuition that we have about the sensor. So when an object is born, in other words, when it enters the field of view, its position is somewhere on the edge of the field of view. The motion is more uncertain. And by the motion, we mean how fast the person is walking, in what direction, and so on. But a reasonable assumption could be to assume that the velocity vector points somewhere into the field of view. So this models that the person does not just enter the field of view to immediately leave it, but rather it has an intent to cross through the field of view in order to get somewhere. So these types of insights can be useful to us when we try to model the object birth. And we will return to this example when we have a look at some different birth models. If we consider object death instead, we have that we cannot track outside the field of view of the sensor. So if an object leaves the field of view, this can be taken as an object death. And it also seems reasonable to assume that it's unlikely that a pedestrian just disappears in the middle of the field of view. Not impossible necessarily, but unlikely. So again, we have some basic insights into what information we can use to model the object death. And we will return to this example when we discuss the object death model, which also can be called the object survival model. When we use random finite sets to model the multi-object tracking problem, in order to model the object birth, we use model for the number of objects that we expect to be born. So in other words, we have some form of birth cardinality probability mass function, or PMF. We have models for the states of the newborn objects, in other words, birth state densities. And to model object death, we use what is called the object survival probability, or simply the probability of survival. And by modeling the survival, we implicitly get a model for object death, since an object either survives or dies. Okay, that was an introduction to what object birth and death refers to in multiple object tracking. In the following videos, we will go into details about the different models for this.